Hi everyone, um, so this is a video for Sagittarius Rising. So what is, oh shit, so what is Sagittarius? Uh, Sagittarius is a fire sign, it's a mutable fire sign ruled by Jupiter and the ninth house. Um, what is Jupiter? Jupiter is overall, it's wisdom, right? It's opposite Mercury. Mercury is basically um, analyzing and knowledge and getting information down whereas jupiter is um jupiter is well okay jupiter is um wisdom it's experiences you know you don't really know how something feels like and you don't really um, you could have all the you could go on youtube and people will tell you all about shrooms people will talk about their experiences and you can have knowledge about it but you won't have the wisdom to know what it is for yourself unless you experience it your fucking self. And how do you do that? You have to go through it. So you have to take the shrooms for yourself and see how it works for you, right? Now, the ninth house, the ninth house is also this. That's why the ninth house rules Jupiter. But Jupiter, um, Jupiter is at home in the, t in the 12th house and in the ninth house. But anyway, um, we'll talk about the 12th house, 12th house later. Um, in the ninth house, Jupiter is about the, 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 the spirit of experiencing, right? So it's a fire sign. So, um, fire signs are the representation of spirit. And then water signs are the representations of the soul. And then Jupiter likes experiencing things in the spirit and in the soul, you know, in the expressing the emotion and then in the soaking in the emotion, so, um, Sagittarius is, if you have Sagittarius in your first house, then you take these things and you put them in your first house, right? So, you appear to be someone who's wise, right? You appear, and think, Sagittarius, people are very, like, cheerful, very lighthearted, like, you always have a good time. So, you appear to be very easygoing. These are people that, like, have hippie looks. These are people that don't give a fuck about if their hair is combed or not. They don't care about that shit. So they look very hippie, 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 dippy like people. You know what I'm saying? These are the kind of people that like, they don't, they don't comb their hair. They're just free, bruh. Like, these are the hippies. You know what I'm saying? Like, they just, but you do get some Sagittarius risings depending, let's say that they're a Virgo son or they're a Taurus son and they'll care about their like physical appearances a lot more, especially if they're a Capricorn son. They care about like looking organized, but if they're like a Cancer sun or if they're a Pisces sun, even worse. Oh my God! Actually, no. Erica Badu has this, but she's she's a lot better. But anyway, Sagittarius risings just have like they just look very free. Now that's that's one. Some some of them do comb their hair and like groom themselves, you know. But there's just something very like. Like, very easygoing about a Sagittarius, you know? Like, they appear to be... They appear... Like, they're, like, one of those guys that you can look at and be like, Damn, you look like you've been through some shit. And look at you, not giving a fuck about mundane things that people do give a fuck about. You know? Um, so, they appear... And these are the kind of people that, like, in their personal lives, like, they have a lot of wisdom on, like people's personal issues right and these are the type of people that aren't really petty in a way they're like oh they like these are the people that understand why people would do specific things you know they understand oh okay some people have the they have been through these experiences in their personal life so that's why they choose to do these things you know what i'm saying but like most of the time when they laugh they have a beaut like a very that smile cheers you up you know like it just makes you happy. Sagittarius energy, just, like, if you are around a Sagittarius rising person, they're just very, like, they're just very giddy, you know, very happy. They don't like, they don't like clingy people, too. I know that. They don't like people that are, like, too serious about themselves or take themselves way too seriously. Um, these are the type of people that like to laugh and make other people laugh, but, like, they don't like to... They just like being free, man, you know? They appear like that. They're just super easygoing but not like libra kind of calm they just these are the type of people that kind of bring an air of joy you know libra brings calmness and then sagittarius risings bring joy you know and then um yeah and then in your second house you're gonna have capricorn 
your second house you're gonna have capricorn right so how you gain value um as a sagittarius rising is if you have some kind of like goal that you're aiming towards you know your goal your your self value is when you even if it's like a, a small goal that you want like oh um i want to move out of my mother's house you know that's they find value in accomplishing those goals they find value in accomplishing um like overcoming really hectic situations and you know they they and they find value in being able to like tell other people that yo i went through this shit and um I'm still here and even though I have all these scars and I'm like really messed up but I'm here and I'm good and my life is good you know that's how they find value that's their value system this is when they when they can like give advice to people and like be the the teacher you know what I'm saying and like be the like be the teacher that's like you guys nah like I mean sure life is hectic now but if you get through these obstacles like life is Life can be your bitch, that type of thing. And the third house, they have Aquarius. So, okay, either they, either they or they attract friends that are very unique and also very, like, um, flighty, you know, very unique people, very um, weird people also can be weird people, people that are, like, that do, that live unusual lives, you know, Sagittarius people may, like, be friends with these kinds of people. A Sagittarius rising, let's say you're Sagittarius rising and you're, like, 16 years old. You probably hang out with, like, grannies. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you have a very odd group of friends that you hang out with. Um, or you hang out with, I don't know, you hang out just with weird people. Or people that, like, that aren't your group of friends, you know. But, like the people that you hang out with kind of have their own unique lives and they are unique people. Or you may have very flighty friends. Like you may have friends that are your age, but they're very fickle. Well, not fickle, but just flighty. Like Aquarius, ghosty people, you know, in and out type of people. Or even if they're not ghosty, because, um, you see, an Aquarius will only ghost on you if they have a reason to. But sometimes they, they just need time out, you know what I'm saying? They just need some time out. They're just breathe and chill out um but yeah so if you have if you have yeah aquarius in your third house then these are the people oh you are this person you are the person that is weird you are the person that is flighty you are the person that just i don't know automatically you just switch up and you ghost people you are the person that like i don't know you just disappear and then you come back at weird times you see and then your fourth house will be Pisces. Um, so now with Sagittarius Risings, people, if your fourth house is Pisces, you grew up in a family that was very, very spiritual, right? Very, but so, now it could either be so spiritual to the point where you grew up in an illusion thinking that the world is like this, that the world, that everybody um, believes in the same superstitions as your parents did, right? Or that, oh shit, oh my ass is so, so ah, I've been sitting for so long. <laughs> it feels like my ass got like super fat. Anyway, um, so you could feel like, oh, you could have grown up in a family where um, your, your parents were very, very religious, right? Very spiritual. And then you grew up thinking that the world also is as spiritual as your family, right? And because your family put you in an illusion, right? Because Pisces is dealing with illusions and shit like that. So they may have, like, you know, put instilled fear in you. Like, oh, if you smoke weed, you're going to start seeing things. Or if you start drinking alcohol, you're going to start seeing things. Or whatever. Or you may, like, your parents are, like, you, you may have been, like, your parents were, like, very, like, Christian. They were very Christian. They were very Muslim. They were very whatever that they were you know they were just very like and to the point where like you grew up not knowing anything else but this but that religion and then um once you jump into once you jump into like once you start like experiencing things yourself in the world you start like realizing holy fuck like the world is nothing like i thought it was and then it's like really scary because like this is all you've ever known and then you might even start like hating your family and stuff 
And then that's when you jump into that Sagittarius where you want to escape. You know, you just want to escape. But okay, look, it could also play out like uh, like this, right? Your parents, um, they may not have been religious, but your house was the house that everybody es like was escaping. Because Pisces is also escapism, right? But emotional escapism. So it could have pay played out like, um, your house, like, whenever you are comfortable with someone, you guys always go to your house to smoke weed. You guys always go to your house to take acid. You guys always go to your house to get drunk. You guys always go to your house to take shrooms. You guys always go to your house to just do drugs. You guys always go to your house to make art, to make music. You know, your house is a spot where everyone, like, we chill and we escape the world around us. You know what I'm saying? We, we escape the emotional harshness of the world and then we come to your house, you know. Or you may have friends that are like this. So you attract friends that have these things at their house. So you always go to their houses. And their houses is the place where you guys take shrooms, take acid, get drunk, get high. You know, make art, all of that shit. Your fifth house being in Aries. Now you are in entertained by being reckless. That's the thing. You probably entertained by being fucking reckless as hell. You like being reckless. And this is fun to you. And you like... Um, you like, and you even may even like being selfish. You may like being a selfish person, right? Because Aries can be very selfish. You know, you may entertain, or you may be entertained um, um, by things that only you like being entertained by. You know, because Aries is about the self, so things that you yourself are entertained by, that other people don't know about. You may be entertained by these things. You know, um, but for the most part, you probably like you entertained by dear devil shit. You Aries, a lot, a lot of people feel like Aries people like sports so as a Sagittarius rising you may like really aggressive sports um I don't know Air yeah you may like you just may like anything that like gives you adrenaline you're entertained by adrenaline things you know you're entertained by almost dying almost dying excites you you know that type of shit <laughs> and then um um your fifth house, sixth house. So your sixth house. Wait, did I say fifth house? Uh, what? Oh, Taurus. Okay, that'll be Taurus. I was about to say my sixth house is Virgo. I got so confused. Oh man, oh, that was a good stretch. Oh. Oh, wow. Guys, I've been sitting down for so long. But anyway, your sixth house is Taurus, right? So you also, someone, you share, you share um, the same vibes as a Leo rising person with Virgo in the second house. You value, um, you value your work and you like gaining stability from your work. You know, you like gaining stability from working on whatever it is that you're working on. Um, so depending on whatever it is that you're into, Whatever, like for example, I'll I'll just keep using art because I feel like my generation is like hella arty. But let's say you are into art, and um, oh, into photography. So you're gonna like you like you're gonna like putting your photography on a day to day basis, right? And you're gonna like making your photography look so cute and everything and really nice and da 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 da, da right? And you're gonna like really value that. You're gonna high key you're gonna value being a photographer right and you're gonna want to gain stability from being a photographer so with this you're gonna um like put put your photography in a routine so you may even organize okay um from mondays to thursdays i'm gonna go shoot at this store and then from fridays to saturday uh, i mean from fridays to sunday i'm gonna take my films and then i'm gonna go do it there and then you know Next week, I'm going to, I don't know, shoot somewhere else. But, you know, it's always good. You're going to value, you're going to value whatever it is that you're working on. And it's going to be some artsy shit because of, because of, um, um, I'm to of Taurus being in there. But if, if it's not artsy shit, you're going to be, like, um, you're going to be somewhat, like, stuck. Do you not stuck, but, like, you're going to be loyal to that job that you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Because Taurus energy is very stubborn. So you may be very stubborn into leaving that job. Or you may think, oh, I've worked so hard now. Why? Why leave now? You know? Um, but yeah. And then your 
the seventh house is Gemini. So, Gemini being in your seventh house, the people that you attract are going to be very talkative people. Just fucking can't shut the fuck up, right? Or, even if they can't shut the fuck up, they're people that think a lot. These are overthinkers. You attract a lot of overthinkers. Jesus, you attract people that, like, can talk about anything. But this is a nice part about Sagittarius. Is also because you're going to attract people that, um, you're going to attract your friends, right? Because Gemini, it deals with friendships. So you're going to attract people that are, like, like your homies. And then you end up dating your homies. And you guys have been homies for, like, so long. But then how you guys even start dating wasn't even, like, on some, yo, are we dating? You just, like, started kissing each other. And then you started, like, hanging out every day. And then, you know, f fucking seven months in, you're hanging out every day. And then someone asks, hey, are you guys dating? And you look at each other like, oh, I guess we are. Huh, cool. You know, that type of energy, you know, it's really cool. Like, you, how you, it's like you date, you attract, you have friends, and then you date your friends. That type of thing. And then your 8th house being in Cancer. So your 8th house being in Cancer. Uh, the people, you like to share your deepest, darkest secrets. And you like to, the people that you like to have sex with. And, um... Well, yeah, you like to have sex with people that you're mostly comfortable with. People that are, like, emotionally in tune with themselves. You like people like that. You like sharing your secrets with people that are emotionally in tune with themselves. Like, you'll even sense when someone is, like, um, this is why Sagittarius is, you may, like, you may have a very sexual, a very intense sexual connection with cancers, right? So, you like people that are emotional, you know, because you feel like, oh, wow, like, okay, this person understands emotions and they know how to push out a good emotion and a good vibration for me to chew off of. And that makes me so turned on. So, you know, boom, why not tell you everything that I feel? That's deep dark. That's deep down and dark in there that nobody ever gets to know. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, basically, you just feel like as soon as you feel comfortable with someone... Or it doesn't even have to be a cancer, but you, you just like to have sex with people that you're comfortable with as a Sagittarius rising, you know, um, or you could be the one that always pushes out, like, let's say you do want to have sex with someone, then you always, you always try to make someone comfortable, you know, so you may be playing out these Cancerian energies when you're a Sagittarius rising and you make someone, um, like if you want to, like, I don't know. If you guys are having, like, those deep, meaningful conversations, then you are the one that's always pushing out the vibration of, ah, uh, dude, it's all good. You know, like, just chill out. We can chill out. We can tell each other anything. That type of vibe. Um, but at the same time, you could also be fooled by these people. Or you could fool people by this. So you could be the one that's manipulative and using emotions to get something out of someone or need to be, or need to backstab them. Or other people could be doing this to you, you know. And then in your ninth house, you have Leo, right? So you learn a lot from Leo, see? And this is what you can learn from Leo. So as you, you as a Sagittarius rising, being so scattered and not really giving a fuck about. So you're like kind of wishy-washy. Oh, you fleet from one thing to another, right? Um, and not talking about your... Because I feel like the only thing... Not the only thing, but what is stable in your life is your routines right but in terms of like um your emotions and stuff you know you can learn from a leo to stick to a particular passion and see it through rather than just being like ah oh, fuck this isn't worth it anymore i'm just gonna go you know a leo can teach you how to like stick with one thing and see it through you know even if it doesn't work now it might work if you try it again and again you know and um yeah and you um, yeah, actually, yeah, that's all, that's all I have to say about that, you know, just learning how to kind of know when to give up, but also know when it's too early to give up, you know, and this is how you learn, this is what you learn from, yeah, and then when you get to your 10th house, which is Virgo, so you work tenth house is like your status quo, what you're seen, what you're known for, and what you're known to do. So as a a, a Virgo tenth house person, Virgo MC person, Virgo midheaven person, I feel like you are someone that is like you can really get into 
investigative type shit, but the details, you know, because this is how it's going to play out, right? With you being a Sagittarius and already having so much wisdom, right? With this 10th house of Virgo, you kind of dive into the details of what happened and why someone would have gone through the extremes to go through what they just did. You know what I'm saying? So um, these are people that could be, let's say you are, like you're doing your photography thing, right? So you may be like you, you may take photos of like very specific things and like how you edit the shits is like in a very detailed um what's this word but in a very detailed organized way you know um you could be someone's personal assistant you know because virgos are the helpers you could be um uh, but also it depends on your house lords you know um you could be i don't know you could be a pa you could be so many i don't know i don't know if virgos are good at investigating shit um oh you could also be someone that's into health oh yeah because virgos virgos be loving that health shit bro you could be a personal trainer you could be like one of those motivational like one of those people that make videos of exercising you know you could be Mm. yeah you could be you could be like in a in an ngo like in a ngo non-government organization on helping people you know going around like picking up papers and actually that would be really dope for sagittarius risings because i know sagis is like sagis be doing it for for the um, sagis be doing it for like the like the spirit of it you know what i'm saying so you could you could even like be one of those people that like form like young organizations and you guys like go around picking up papers, you know, giving food to homeless people, shit like that. You know, anything helpful. And then in your eleventh house you have Libra. So how you like your whenever you whenever you are yeah, actually, you know what? I'm thinking about my Sagittarius friend and how we met. Because uh, we met at a party and he just came to me and he hugged me. And then we just, like, started talking from there. So I feel like as a Sagittarius rising, whenever you are out um, in places that you don't know. For example, let's say you went to a party and this party is in a building you've never been before. Right, so that's unfamiliar to you because the 11th house is dealing with the unfamiliar um, and your associations. So whenever you are around in unfamiliar territory right and you just meet someone and then you guys start having like a one-on-one -on -one discussion and then depending on the 11th house law that's what you're going to be talking about um um yeah basically that's all and then your fucking 12th house so if you have Scorpio, you have Scorpio in your twelfth house, right? So this is kind of like sharing energies with, 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 with a Leo rising also, because Leo risings have Pisces in the eighth house, right? But here you have Scorpio in your, in your, in your, in your, in your twelfth house. So Scorpio is also going to be taking power and control over things. So you may subconsciously be a control freak as a Sagittarius rising subconsciously be very manipulative subconsciously love drama subconsciously um love controlling other people's emotions or like love i don't know making people be useful to you you know what i'm saying and then if they're not useful to you then you just dip and you're like oh, peace sign you know what i'm saying um Oh, subconsciously your dreams are also like somewhat nightmares or oh, I don't know sometimes your subconscious can take power and control over you and then you need to learn how to subconsciously um take con power and control over your subconscious but the subconscious I don't know I don't know if you can take power and control over your subconscious but fuck it you probably can't so you gotta learn how to take power and control over your own subconscious and those emotions you know and then not let those emotions completely flood you over and completely like take over your life you know you're like but subconsciously you're very like subconsciously you're actually very you're very intense you're a very intense person but i think because of this intensity like with your with your um thingy rising 
with your Sagittarius rising, you learn to like um um you you like you gain enlightenment from these intense feelings and emotions. Then you give them like you you start to understand them for what they really are, but in an like in a philosophical kind of a philosophical um perspective and trying to trying to gain like an understanding of where these things come from and why we even have emotions in the first place you know what i'm saying so yeah um that's my video on sagittarius rising and yeah bye